before this video begins, I want to make sure and say, always ask your friends about their allergies when you're sharing mead with them. In this episode of Power Expanders, I did not do this, and I should have. This would be a terrible time to tell you that I have an allergy to kiwis. <laughs> BC, I'm sorry for trying to murder you. It's uh, okay, I'm alive still. Yeah. So, episode three. We've done two of these. We're and here. And I have to say, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite series just because... It's a lot of fun. Uh, it is, like, a little nerve-wracking in some <laughs> regards because, like, I don't know what you're going to bring. You don't know what I'm going to bring. And I think at this point we're also trying to stump each other. A little bit, yeah. So, <laughs> it's this is fun. Um, today, let's start with yours. I always start with mine as what I brought. What have, what have you brought? Um, well, I guess I'll throw it up yeah, on the screen right now. Yeah, throw it on the screen. I can't this is, this is what I can't say. This is what BC has brought um, to the table, and this is what I have brought to the table. So, uh, of course, there will more than likely be a video. I don't know if yours has a video on it, but it if does. there is, there will be a link in the description. Same thing for mine, if you're interested in these. Let's crack them open and okay. get some, some pours. Okay, so mine's bottle conditioned, so we'll want to pour delicately, because okay. there's, a, there's a bit of a film. Mine's not bottle conditioned. Okay. So, we have... Poured both of them, and I must say, yours is really a really nice color. Thank I you. I mean, it's that's beautiful, and I'll show some close up, of course. Mine is <laughs> hazy, and um, there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hazy, it, yeah. but it's not like not clear. I can see my hand through the glass. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> so I like said, there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's ominous. <laughs> Okay. Let's start with yours. I, we need to start with okay. yours. And just... so we're going to start with the nose on both? Start with nose, yeah. Let, let's get uh, a nose check. Ooh. Cranberry, raspberry, they're like my immediate mm -hmm. aromas. Um, obviously, color <laughs> just plays way into that. Yeah, yeah uh, that but helps. helps with the... Uh... But it does have... A, I, I recently um, tried a raspberry mead that mm -hmm. one of my friends made. And so I'm going to have that Ooh. kind of fresh on my nose. Just about poured it up my sinuses just now. Ooh, it smells very, um, like the honey character is, is not super bright, mm -hmm. but it's got the round, round warmth that I like want from a good honey. Okay. So. You're picking up a lot on the nose. I've, it's, it's allergy season here in Oklahoma, so I'm a little bit disadvantaged yeah. tonight. It's not, I will say this, it's not a, um, particular, like, this is Tupelo honey aroma. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. more wildflower, but I do get a bit of, uh. Floral side. Okay. Mine. <laughs> Get clear out the sinuses yeah, as say. much as I can. Whoa. That is a <laughs> contrast. Yes. That's like. Gotta clear out your sinuses. <laughs> That's not bad. It, mm -hmm. it does. It definitely smells boozy. Mm -hmm. But it, it also has like some apple character and like the, the honey aromatics are strong on this. You're mm -hmm. picking up a lot of honey just hanging out over the over the liquid. Yeah, this one, it has, uh, you can feel the booziness on your, mm -hmm. the back of your throat. Yeah. That's... Talk about clearing out my sinuses, yeah. <laughs> legitimately. It does, it smells hot, uh -huh. but not hot in like a young sense, but in just like a high alcohol. Mm -hmm. Like, like if it was fortified with brandy or something. Yeah. You would get like a little bit of that, that sting. Spirity, like side, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I follow you. The honey character on the nose is really nice though. Uh -huh. it, it, it reminds me of, of Chaucer's a little bit. It's got that... I was fair. Yeah. That, I don't want to say artificial honey smell, but it definitely is like, it's very honey forward on the nose, which I'm not used to with with meat in general. Yeah. Particularly with the meads I've had here, most of them are young and dry because we're doing A-B tests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is a different this is <laughs> character than I'm used to here. Well, I'm okay. excited about this actually. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing now. No, it's great. That was a look you shot me. Okay. I don't. It's, it's not trying to stop. There's no poison. It's just. Well. It's interesting. It's. Uh, <laughs> I'm hype. Let's start with yours. All right. Ooh. It's definitely. Um. I get more sweetness on the nose than I do the actual palate. Mm -hmm. But there's the tartness that on the aroma. When I when I was smelling it, I was like, man, it's gonna be tart. It's gonna be like, not. I guess a little sour. But it's not. You've you've contrasted. Um, some, a bit of sweetness with the tartness that I think is raspberry. That's the, the vibe I'm getting from it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pick up some other note. How well do you know your berries? Apparently. I don't know. <laughs> it does... Oh, It could be... It's a little more earthy than 
a raspberry. Well, that's after a cup, after a sip or two. Mm-hmm. This is one of my favorites, probably that I've done in the last year. It. Mm, now I'm teetering. The aroma said bright, which made me think raspberry, but now the taste of it's getting closer to blue, like a blueberry side. It's more earthy to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't, I don't get the same raspberryness. It has a nice body though. I don't know. It's like good tannic value. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's from. I'm not getting any, getting any like tea taste to it or anything like that. So I don't think it's tea tannin. But it does have. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm still developing my palate for tannins to yeah. say this is wine powder. You know, tannin or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for what they contribute to the mouthfeel. It's very refreshing. This is really nice. It's crushable. Crushable, crushable smashable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, this is one of the most sessionable things I think that's come out of my home, home meadery. I'm stuck. I don't know. It's so good. If it is, if it is raspberry, <laughs> uh -huh. the, you've tampered the, or tempered down the bite, the acidity, that, um, punch in the face that you get with a raspberry a lot mm -hmm. of time with honey character and some sweetness. But I, I don't know for sure. I'm also thinking it's, Within that blueberry realm. And I said cranberry, but I don't, I don't know if that's true. I cannot say I've had enough cranberries in my life to be like a cranberry I've aficionado. Wanted, I've always wanted to do a cranberry meat or wine, and mm -hmm. just, I'm, the the pH on it yeah. freaks me out. Like, I, because I don't want to have to, like, back sweeten it up to, like, 104, 105, just to, like, <laughs> cut through the, the acid. But, man, every year... After Thanksgiving, when I see cranberries go on sale, I'm like, like oh, I gotta do it, gotta buy them. Now's the time, now's the time. I don't, um, I gotta formulate more of a theory, but it's somewhere, I'm thinking it's, it's blueberry. Okay. But I do think you've added some extra brightness, and I'm trying to figure out what the brightness is. I don't know if it's, uh, it's brighter than a blueberry that I'm used to. That's yeah. all I, where I'm getting at. Well, do you want to give your mouth a break for a minute? Yeah. yeah. Here you go. Your hesitation. It's not hesitation, it's just, um, you know when I said, I texted you, I said, oh boy, do I have a mead for you? Huh. That takes you on a little bit of a journey. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. This isn't bad. Yeah. It's not bad. It's just, I didn't expect, it's a little bit like bumper cars. I didn't mm -hmm. expect to be jarred from flavor profile to flavor profile in that way. Yep. So, there is a lot of sweetness. A crazy amount of sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, not cloying, just sweet. Like, it doesn't gum up your mouth, but it is sweet. There is a, a real punch of acid hmm. about 10 to 15% of the way through consuming it. Yeah. You're, you're like hit with sweet, and then acid kind of punches you in the front of the tongue. Uh -huh. And then immediately, like before you swallow, it's all tannin washing down your tongue. Yeah, and it's a it's like a oaky, uh, woody kind of tannin. That's like, it has texture. It has, it has texture on this the one, palate. Even for me, knowing what it is, it's a curveball because there's a lot going on with it. Can you pick out any predominant flavor? It's pretty. It's pretty thick. <laughs> yeah. No, it's hard to get past the sweetness mm -hmm. to really experience. Like, I'm trying to, I want to divine what that acid is, because it feels like it's a fruit-derived acid. And wow. this is a good opportunity to talk about those different acids, speaking of which. Mm -hmm. We have citric acid, mm -hmm. which is oranges and lemons, which is that bright, um, very punchy, I feel like, acid. Is that what, I don't yeah. know if I would yeah, describe yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's, it's got, like, a freshness. Mm -hmm. Then there's malic acid, which is apples and is pear, are pears malic? In that world, and, and you've described it as round, mm. or a round acid, so it's yeah. more, it's a little bit bright, but it's got some more, I don't know how to describe it best, but it's its not as punchy in your face as citric acid. Yeah, it's definitely, if, if you've had apple or quince or pear versus biting into a lemon or an orange or a lime, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a very discernible acid profile. Yeah. I mean, it's not just the flavor of an apple versus a lemon, but that bright pop versus that round zing. Yeah. It's a totally different experience, and that's why we use them in various ways in balancing. Those are the two main ones I use. Yeah. I mean, most of the time. There's tartaric too, which is in grapes. Yeah. And is in uh, acid blend. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of folks will use tartaric in place of citric because of some of the biological things that can happen with citric acid yeah. in a brew. Uh, I've never had any problems with I haven't like either. I don't, also don't have... I have acid blend on hand. I need to go buy citric and all those things. So anytime I add... I t intentionally add acid, it has acid blend in it or lemon juice or something. I don't get anything dominant in the honey. Like, I'm trying to pick up... Mm -hmm. Uh, of a floral variety, or mm -hmm. I don't get anything like a buckwheat or an orange blossom. Like I don't, I don't pick up anything notable. There's a little bit of toffee on the exhale, which I don't know if that's from the honey or if that's from. I picked some... that up too. Like caramel, that yeah, um, candy sugar. Candy sugar is kind of the the vibe or the world I was at. Yeah, like it's this. almost a little bit like a Werther's original. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got a little bit of that hard yes. candy caramel. That's it. Just is like it rests on the back of your tongue if you like. Yeah, just enough air to move the flavor across your tongue. I'm really curious what what this tannin is in here. I don't like it. I don't hate it, but like this with like an American oak where you get some more of that vanillin and softness yeah, would be, I think would help amplify the flavor that you're getting from the sweetness in here. It would, it would give a character to the sweetness that I think is lacking. Um, and I guess what I'm saying is that it's like unbalanced Yeah, and, and unbalanced in a way that really snaps your neck. Uh huh. It's, I mean, it tastes like a lot of the, the, the early sweet brews that I made. And that's why I'm trying to like, what did I do back then that would give this flavor profile? Because like learning to balance is an art. It is. It takes it, time and you got to do it a ton. That's the challenge. A of it. ton. And you got to like do it wrong a lot of times too. That's, that's you can't always do it right. You got to go, oh crap, I put too much citric in. Right, right. Well, let's try to make a guess. Um, I'll start with, I'll give you more time to, to stew. Um, okay. No, let's, I'm. I'm. I have no freaking clue. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw out a best guess. So what? What do you? What do you think this is? I think that blueberry, light ABV, wildflower honey. Um. I again, I can't. I cannot pinpoint exactly what the herb herbally side I'm getting. Okay. It could be a giant placebo. There could be no herbally side at all. But there's something in there that is, and it reminds me. To me, my head was going, are there hops? Every time I think of hops, I think of bright, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I think of the IPA just made, made recently, yeah. where it was, like, super bright. And I was like, I'm not getting this, the extreme brightness of hops. But there could be some hop varietal that is, like, hmm. real round and not more herbally <laughs> set. Yeah. So, maybe some her herbally sort of hop. Okay. I'm going to guess that this is Joe's Ancient Orange Meat. Okay. That's the flavor profile I'm getting. Overly sweet weirdly balanced tannin and not good acidity that creates a, a fine product. Uh -huh. I know that's probably not what this is, but this is what it reminds me of. It mm -hmm. creates, it's like a product that ends sweet. It's fine. It's drinkable. Your D and D buddies would be happy with it. But personally I would want to improve upon that. And you can improve upon yeah. Joe's ancient orange mead because you you're, you're not, you're not, you're not supposed to deviate from Joe's recipe. Sounds I've like tried. A, sounds like a, it sounds like a challenge. Uh, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. But that's what I would guess because I don't I don't pick up anything. Uh, I mean, this tastes like sweet. It tastes like acid. And then it tastes like a weird grainy tannin that just like, man, it just holds that flavor on your tongue in a way that you like almost can't scrape it off. Yeah. Like you can't get it off of your tongue. Yeah. And I, I can't fathom what, <laughs> what this would be. Let's start with yours. So that's the end of mine because I think... Okay, so this is the Valheim mead. This is the tasty ah. mead. Pound of, uh, pound of raspberries, half a pound of blueberries. Okay. So you got raspberry and blueberry. It's uh, like five and a quarter percent alcohol mm -hmm. and just lightly back sweetened with erythritol. And the honey used in this was gallberry honey. Mm, I, don't, I don't think I've ever tried it's, gallberry. It's very similar in flavor to wildflower, but it's got like a little fruitiness in it. Yeah. That gives it something interesting. And I think the fruitiness of the honey is what helps with the the complexity on something that's so low alcohol. Yeah. No this tannin is... adjustment, but it's set on the skins for four days. Yeah. So this, it really... It has a nice body. Is... A lot of that. I really like that. I mean, I'm going to... Point to that video. That's brand new to your I channel was, too. Yeah, I was saying to to one of my friends, this is better than it has any right to be because <laughs> of how 
stupidly simple. And you said that one was a week, right? A week from start to bottle. Yeah, it it was in the bottle within six days. Go check out that video. That's that's nuts. (laughs) So ridiculous. So, all right, ready for mine? I'm terrified to know what this is. This is... Oh, it's got a label. Oh, it's got a fake label. Um, This is a strawberry and kiwi 17% um me that i made using the ylp 099 okay i've been trying to push that yeast to 25 percent. this was my uh starting one it was a strawberry and kiwi juice base okay and the honey was clover honey i'm pretty sure it was not it was not anything crazy because okay. I, I was trying i was kind of doing it cheap and that's it yeast keep strawberry and kiwi honey this would be a terrible time to tell you that i have an allergy to kiwis wouldn't it it's, it's been 15 years since I've had a kiwi fruit, so maybe it went away. I don't pick up kiwi or strawberry. Stay away from it, then. I pick up, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to drink any more. I think I'm fine. I'm not like... Maybe fermented kiwi. Maybe that's your, maybe your that's advice. Where you I just go. ferment all the kiwi and you can have it. Like I, I feel like flush now because you said kiwi and I was like... But also, it's a juice base. So do I need wondering... an EpiPen? <laughs> I wonder if there was a part of it that was fake. Fake yeah. kiwi yeah. flavoring because it was a great value juice. I got the whole juice thing for a dollar, oh. so so it's natural flavor natural. probably. Yeah, um, if at least back when I had kiwi the last time, it would send me into like a state of like well, I'm, I'm having very... to lay on my back and take a benadryl. <laughs> this palate expanders would have gone a whole, <laughs> okay. whole different just way. Just drop. <laughs> just... Um, holy. Sh- okay, <laughs> so use that bleep button. Um, I, I am gonna take one more sip because I don't think it's. I, I'm not feeling. It was. It'd be like a chest tightness. <laughs> okay. Please, this, don't, please so don't die. <laughs> in, in the interest of of of, ex, of explaining this though, that's why kiwis banned from mead stamp. Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, you know, I should have remembered that. I I forgot. It was, it was not an assassination attempt. I promise you. That was not what I was going for. FBI, if you're watching this <laughs> upon my untimely demise. It was completely intentional. What's interesting? Hold this man accountable. I, I, this one coming out of the, it was, it was up here. Coming out of the primary was terrible. I mean, it was hot. It's seventeen percent. It yeah, is, no, it's boozy. It is a. It was a punch in the face. Just not good at all. Had so many problems. I taste test. Uh, I tasted it again. It's like six months old now. Okay. I tasted it again about a week ago. And I was like, what the F happened? Because you're right. It has caramely Werther's original taste. Mm. It has a oak side that like... So you didn't do anything to the tannin on this? Nothing. Literally just juice, honey, and yeast. Didn't touch it. The tannin profile is weird on this then. Like, maybe they, in making their juice, they ground up a bunch of seeds or something. And yeah. Because like I said, it it's almost an oaky flavor. I didn't want to call it oak. That's why I went with Joe's Ancient Orange yeah. Meat. Because there was just like, like a weird woody graininess. It that's that, the thing. It's like tasted. I was like, what is going on? Because it's just so different than what you think. Like you're not. When I think strawberry and kiwi, I'm like, okay, they're gonna be bright, fruity, and like whatever. But this is something else. So, it's not bad. Yeah. I could see, you know, with maybe another year and a half of age on this, I could see this being something that you would like. This would be about the pour you would want. Yeah. But I could see it being a nice like winter warmer. I would not tell people that it's strawberry kiwi. I'd say check out this yeah, delicious sure. traditional meat I made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it does have that like that that sack mead quality yeah. that a lot of folks, particularly folks who are not like in this world, uh-huh. associate with mead. Yeah. It's in the sweetness level. It's like uh, I started by the way, this one started at one point one six four and stopped at one point zero three five with that okay. yeast. So it, it chewed through sweeter than that. Yeah, it's it's got a lot. But I picked this one because I was like, it's so interesting and it's such a curveball. Yeah, even yeah. myself, like tasting it, I would not have been like strawberry and kiwi. And so in some ways I wasn't fair to you. But I was curious what you would get from it, especially something being 17%. We haven't had something on 17. No, and I'm feeling it too. It's, yeah. The temperature is rising. <laughs> it's interesting. I, 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 now that I'm not in anaphylaxis... <laughs> I would be interested in trying this a year from now to see how it develops. Well, I almost threw it away, and then I took a taste of it. <laughs> no, well, here's what happened. Like, okay. I finished up the video for this, from uh-huh. this, and um, I was like, last time I tasted that one, it was garbage. Like, I'm just going to toss it. And then I went ahead and did a little taster real fast, and I was like, what happened? So <laughs> what? I'm glad I kept it, because I am going to keep it for yeah. another, 
I don't know how long, I'll bottle uh, some of it and like just keep put it away because yeah. I'm curious, like you said, what's gonna happen with something like this? So interesting. This is a great time to say if you make a bad mead, um, sometimes you gotta choose. Is it worth keeping around or is it worth throwing away? And I think it's worth keeping at least a couple bottles of yeah. most every mead you make. You can always you know, like this one, for example, I'm not going to bottle all 12, whatever, 11 bottles right, of it now. Right. I'm going to bottle four or five and dump the rest of it. Not because I don't think it's good, but because I want to start new things. And some people are going to cringe and go, don't dump it, drink it, you know, yeah. and maybe I will drink more of it. But it's, it's, uh, make stuff and then keep it around. Yeah. You'd be surprised. The, the thing in it, I, I have this conversation with folks a lot. Particularly like my friends that are mm -hmm. like, you're, dump you're dumping alcohol? Yeah. That that wonderful booze <laughs> is going into your yard? But like the thing that people have to understand is we make a large quantity of yes. stuff. Yes. Way more than we can drink. And honestly, I'm sure you're at the same point. More than we can give away. Yeah. And so sometimes to empty a vessel, that means a little bit has to go in the compost. I've bin. been stuck for a month where I can't ferment anything new because I don't have <laughs> any fermenters. I'm gonna have to make a sacrifice to in order to keep the YouTube channel running. So, and that's yeah. that's the sacrifice we make. Yeah. So, BC, I'm sorry for trying to murder you. It's um, okay. I'm, I'm alive still. Yeah. So. I'm glad. There's. I, you know, I had an aspirin be... before I came over here, so maybe that was like the antidote. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, we're, I'm glad you're alive, and I'm gonna point everyone to BC's channel. Go check out Doing the Most. He. The Val Valheim mead and everything else. He makes a lot of great stuff. I can attest to it absolutely, and his content itself is great. We'll be back with more Palette Expanders. We're actually doing one again soon. <laughs> um, so I hope you will uh, yeah. join us for that next one. And thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.